Hello and welcome to Guy Logic. My name is Temko and today we are taking a look at a game called Defragmented. What is Defragmented? Well, that's a good question. It is a game designed and developed by Glass Knuckle Games, a indie studio that describes the title as a lightning fast cyberpunk action RPG, where you unravel a power struggle for the future of the evolution of mankind, using strategic combat, unique character classes and a pulse pounding soundtrack. Well, I will give him the soundtrack, it is pretty damn good, and if I can find it as a separate purchase, I will definitely get it to enjoy it when I'm not playing the game. It is that damn good, because it incorporates some of my favorite sound types in one simple setting, such as Far Cry Blood Dragon, Hotline Miami 2, as well as the pseudo movie Kung Fury. So they have a very nice load of sound, and it comes true because sound is this game's definite strong suit. As for the R2 points, it being a shooter with RPG, well, I'll give him the RPG sort of, and it's a kinda a shooter, but they mix and match those two features quite a bit that brings back the downsides of both with very few of the upsides of either. First, before we head into that, we're gonna head into the options menu. And if you do not wanna hear me talk about options for the next five or so minutes, I suggest you press the annotation that has appeared somewhere on your screen and skip straight ahead to the gameplay section. If you do, well, strap in, we're gonna head into options. Settings have video and audio, and in video settings, there's really only three things that bother me. The first thing is this weird increase-decrease video quality and increase-decrease resolution thing they have going on. I have no idea why they would not just put this in a drop-down menu. There is absolutely no benefit to doing it this way. It is confusing, it is annoying, and it takes more time to get to the resolution or video quality you desire. No full screen windowed mode, they do have windowed mode, so that's a bit of a drawback, but we can live with that. And they don't have a colorblind mode, which is definitely a drawback for people that are colorblind, because the game uses a lot of colors, that from what I understand, is going to be a problem for people like that. So if you have colorblindness of some type, I suggest taking a look at the gameplay section to see if there are any issues for you to play the game with or without that. The big thing though that bothers me about this game's options menu is that the game portrays itself as a top-down shooter, much like Hotline Miami. But it isn't, it's rendered full 3D, which means you're missing quite a few 3D settings and options that we would expect from any other full 3D game, such as anti-aliasing or anisotropic filtering. We don't have those, which is a definite mark against the game. If we head back and head into audio settings, you'll also notice it's missing master volume. Now I can generally live with this because music volume and SFX volume are pretty doable to do this with, but a lack of a master volume is again a sort of a mark against the game because it's just a nice thing to have. It has net pluses, it doesn't have downsides to adding it, so why wouldn't you? Music volume also has this weird menu structure of plus one, plus five, minus one, minus five. Again, I do not understand why you would do this. This is bad UI design in general. Uh, don't do this, please. It implement a drop down, a slide, or something like that. I do not like this menu option at all. But Music volume, FX volume, it is there, it's pretty decent. What I do like is the audio visualizer, which is a pretty nice addition and really brings the audio, which is definitely the game's strongest suit, to the forefront. That was the options menu, pretty simple, right? The game performs quite well, I have a stable X60 FPS in all situations, and if I uncap the frame rate not using VSync, I jump right about to a thousand FPS in certain situations which uh, you really can't blame the game for, which is another reason why I'm so sad they didn't add all the extra and the aliasing and the like features and parameters you could have wanted because the game has the performance for it. Why not do it? Now, if we head into the gameplay part, you will see that there's three save slots and I have a level 20 and you could have three save slots because you can play the game with multiple character classes. In reality, these character classes differ very slightly between each other which is only in the abilities department. You have a couple of activatable abilities, I will show you in a second, but that is the only place they differ. Everything else plays very, very identical. If I head into the missions, you will see I am about halfway through the game. I have not finished the last mission in chapter two, and then there's two more chapters with a couple of missions left. Each mission has three difficulty settings, a normal, a painless, and a hardware difficulty, which translates to normal, easy, and hard. Pretty simple. You can toggle the intro uh, cutscene on or off, and I'm glad they added this because you will be doing the same missions very, very often. 
The main reason for that is because the game is quite a grind to get the necessary levels to survive the various missions because they have added these randomized things in here that will make your life quite a bit tougher. So you, I'm glad they added the toggle intro, I'm not glad they have added that randomization in the game. Another thing I want to show you before I head into the gameplay mode is the various operations, which is the way you upgrade things like ammo, capacity for light, heavy and energy ammo, as well as a vendor area where you can sell gear and buy new gear. And you level up this vendor area by spending money in it. So the more money you spend, the better the vendor becomes and the better gear you can buy off the vendor. The problem with that is that you have to replay levels again and again and again to get junk gear to sell to the vendor, to buy new gear to sell to the vendor, even if you don't need the gear, to level up the vendor in the hope it will have good gear for you. I I think they should have thought that one through a bit more. Uh, because right now I'm level 20 and the vendor is only level 15 because I just don't have the gear to level up the vendor to sell or buy stuff off him. But enough about that. Let's get into some gameplay, shall we? If I head into chapter 2 and I grab the UV bar, I can show you the gameplay on normal difficulty. Gameplay starts with a cutscene and you can disable this cutscene like I said before. And one thing I want to showcase in these cutscenes is the fact that they look quite a lot like a dating sim or a visual novel. And I really like this art style they have chosen for these cutscenes. Now this cutscene is in a, in a home or a hotel room or an office or something like that. And each cutscene is in a different setting and you're talking to different characters. And, and these characters give you a little bit of dialogue and story. Which isn't voice spoken, so it's all just text, which I don't like as much. But then again, it is an indie studio. I'm pretty sure they had the tiniest of budgets available. One of the reasons they probably had a very tiny budget is because they developed this game hoping to do a Kickstarter for it, which failed. Quite quite spectacularly, it failed. Uh, and yet the game is here, so they have uh, really buckled down and released the title, so I commend them for that most definitively. So, you can read this text and, and uh, this will give you the story step by step and so forth and so on. The story is not exactly complex, but it is decently well written for a indie studio. Obviously it's not up to par with something like Firewatch, but that doesn't mean it's bad, it's just a little corny. Then again, they have taken the music from things like Far Cry Blood Dragon, so you expect a little bit of corny, cheesy, pseudo sci-fi. So there's that. This is the, this is the cutscenes, each level has them, and they are okay, and if you like the story, that's pretty good. We can skip the cutscenes by pressing escape and head straight into gameplay. So we're gonna do that and skip the scene and load in into the level. Loading times aren't that big as expected. As I said when I was in the options menu, and if you skip that head, well, here's an update. The game is 3D, but it pretends to be 2D. So it renders this top-down view with sort of an angle in the distance. But the problem is, is that it doesn't exactly look nice, does it? The game looks actually pretty bad. The animations are pretty janky, and if I change my camera angle, which is something you can do, you can see how, like, no, oh, it doesn't look pretty nice, does it? So my suggestion, play top down. You can change the camera angle if you want, and if you press space, you can angle the camera in the direction you're looking, and plan ahead for the level a little bit. Obviously, this is a feature Hotline Miami had as well, only there was a top down. I would have preferred this game be top down, honestly. I would have preferred the developers made this game 2D. Because uh, this doesn't look nice and it really distracts from my preferred gameplay from a very nice stylized cutscene into, well, this low fidelity graphic setup that fits better with a first year gaming development student than a studio. So that's a real shame. Then again, it's all about the gameplay, right? Graphics are only a shell on the gameplay. How does the gameplay work? Well, that's why I picked this level, because this is, I think, one of the worst levels in the game. You might say, well, don't you show us a good level? I show this level because I want to really showcase the way they messed up the, the combination of RPG and shooter. So in Hotline Miami, one shot, one kill. Every bullet would kill something, one bullet to you would kill you, or a gun, or a knucklehead to the face, or you know, whatever else. This game has hit points, so I can take a couple bullets. This game also has mischance. If I check my weapons here, and I'll get into the inventory in a little bit, I can see my imprecise beam have a 78% accuracy rate. 
My accurate laser has 86, and my weak defender has 87. And the difference in damage between these two is pretty humongous. So I'm gonna have to use my imprecise beam just because it does more damage. Now these mobs won't do anything until I come closer. And one of the things I want to showcase why this is a bad level is as soon as I come closer, they start shooting out of vision range. And I have no way of preventing them from shooting at me through that level. So I lost half my hit points because I couldn't plan for this engagement, which is a major feature of Hotline Miami. And that is a real shame. Another thing I wanted to showcase you is this mischance. You could see how often I missed just shooting a laser. Now for some strange reason, reason for balance purposes, these lasers are very slow, so that isn't exactly what you got realistic. And you can see it there again. Also, you can most of the combat you do is going to be out of camera distance, so you could toggle the camera and shoot, but then you can't move properly because the camera moves around the center at a point. It all feels a little bit clunky. Um, so you could call it a hard game. Yes, you could. You could definitely call it a very difficult title. The problem with that, calling it a difficult title, implies that the game somehow does this in a good way. But the reality is, it is more random and chance, as well as how far over leveled you are for the level, than any actual planning you can do on your end. As you saw just now, I can't hit through these. They stop my shots, but the enemies do hit through them. They don't stop their shots. Um, I can't move through these objects, except when I can, sometimes. They will block my path forward, but they won't block the enemy. I have to shoot like 20 times to hit these things here. here. And yeah, there we go. And that's a real shame. That's a real shame. I, I feel if the developers remove the mischance, remove the hit points from the game, just had you be one hit point and the enemies all have one hit point, they would have a much more compelling title in terms of gameplay. Mostly because all the gameplay in the title is you trying to uh, mitigate the randomized mischance. And if all you're doing is managing the mischance by minimizing it like XCOM 2 or other dice based games like that, that is fine. But you're not. Then all the shooting comes down to a dice roll and numbers game such as right now where you see several mischances. Let's see if we can finish the level. And again here, again in the distance, very far in the distance, I can shoot and hit him, but he'll never know I'm there. Which is fine, but it's still weird that I have to do this from a very weird angle when the entire game is designed around this top-down view. So, I, I chose this level on purpose to showcase all the bad things about the shooter mechanics. Are there good things about the shooter mechanics? Yeah, the shooting is very fun, it feels very, very... Uh, instantaneous, your, your guns react, there's a variety of weapons, I, I, have, I have two lasers here, this is a very slow laser, this is a much faster laser, this is a machine gun or, or a semi-automatic pistol, you have ammo, if you run out of ammo you have to use a different weapon, if you completely run out of ammo you have to use melee which is obviously very very hard so you can make yourself as easy as hard as you want to or as you have to. You get credits, you can spend these for gear on a fender, I, will sh uh, I showed you Defender uh, a little bit earlier, and we'll show you Defender area in a second. And you get various energy types as well as all of that. You have a couple of special abilities on top of your weapons. And your special abilities do three things. I'm going to read them up. Each class, so these special abilities differ per class. That's pretty important to know. They are not that different in actual gameplay results, but they do differ per class. So that's a major difference between the three classes. My abilities are Fracture, which deals melee damage, which is useless. I have never used melee damage, and you probably never will, because getting in melee to an enemy is a sure way to die. The other, other one is Ascension, which uh, uses your Ascension stacks and gives you a bonus damage for a couple of seconds. And if you're going run and gun, um, this can stack up quite well and you can keep this going, which is pretty interesting. But if you miss and you die because of a random mischance, that drags you down again. So, again, that random mischance is really, really the main crux here that, that is really getting on my nerves and really preventing my major enjoyment of the game. And thirdly is Intervention, which creates a shield that blocks bullets. So this is interesting. If I press the shield, um, it makes a shield in front of me, but only to the side. Which is, like, really strange. Why would that shield be to the side? 
It's just one side. So I have to like run back and forth if I want to toggle and then shoot this way. It is really weird. I'm not sure why they would do that to the side. I don't see the main reason for that purpose. You can hit these objects, but again, the physics are a bit wonky. Again, I would have liked them to have just have a 2D top-down static interface instead of all of this. But I'm going to assume that some limitations of their engine or some plans they had for these things but never came to fruition due to budget constraints. Dodge, several misses, and I hit a crit. So there again is a randomized chance you have there. When you finish a level, um, the level is not actually complete. You have finished it though. So you can now wander the level around and loot various items off the ground if you have to or want to. You get a scoreboard. And um, based on your score, you can do various things. Um, you get a bonus of credits and the like for that. The scoreboard isn't available out of the game. So it isn't something that's on leaderboards or the like. It's just something you have for yourself. Which is a bit of a shame. I hope they do add leaderboards to the game sooner rather than later. Now, if I check the dealio vendor, I can use my credit and currency on that. Problem here is though, this is a level 10 map, a level 10 level. I'm level 20 and you could see how fast I died just because of the randomized chances. I died really, really fast. So I had to grind up to level 20 to do this level properly, which is always a bit ridiculous that I had to do the previous level time after time after time after time to get the necessary experience to be able to survive the randomization in this level to survive the level to be able to progress further. That is still my main criticism. I could not plan and it's a bit wonky on that. But here I can buy items and sell items if I want to. Selling items gives me credits and I can buy items if I want to. Obviously I don't want to because these items are so very far under my level and I can exit the law from here. When you exit the level, you instantly go to the next level. And should you die after completing the level by, for example, falling through the wall or falling in the ground, which does happen on occasion, sadly, um, you will have to restart the level from scratch, even though you did finish it. So that's a bit annoying. And now it starts the next level. And like, I'm going to skip back to the terminal because I showed you how the gameplay works and talk about two more things that we haven't mentioned yet, which is leveling ammo capacity as you can see here i have d coins uh, required four i have eight available so i can confirm and say max ammo up d coins you get either from randomly being dropped in the world in one of the crates or one of the chests or the like or you get them from killing special mobs special mobs are the same as normal mobs except they have more hit points a lower miss chance a higher dodge chance and uh just attack faster in general. So they're a bit stronger versions of normal mobs and you can recognize them by the triangle above their head. The problem is that they spawn randomly, you have no control over them and they can really fuck you up based on where they spawn or what they do. If they're the first mobs in that UV level, you will die because you cannot survive two shots from their shotgun, even if you are 10 levels above the recommended level for that level. Damn, it's gonna get really hard to save fast. So we have, a D, we have upgrades here for energy ammo, which my laser uses, heavy ammo, which my gun uses, light ammo, which machine guns use, and mesh bombs, which is I haven't shown you yet. I'll show you in a second. All of this is separate upgrades. You can enter, also enter the deal your world, which is the vendor world. And you also level this vendor up by spending money on the vendor. And then the vendor levels up and it gives you higher rank items. What is a pretty interesting idea in general translate into a very heavy grind because now I have to go to Delio, find if I have any weapons I want to sell, sell them, buy new weapons with the credits I have saved up. So if I go to Substantial Sniper, I have to buy that for 2,000 credits, yes. Buy Program Crore, yes, it's actually a good Program Crore, I'm gonna have to use that. Sell the Sniper again and that way somehow get enough credits to level up this thing into something more useful so that is really really annoying i i do not like that they could have just added this to be scaling with your level i said level 20 i expect the vendor to have level 20 items it does not it's at level 15 items why because it is level 2 and it needs to be level 3 so that's a bit annoying talking about inventory and weapons i have three main weapons you can switch between them on one two three i have mesh bombs and mesh bombs you throw by the right mouse button they go over there and they do the explodey thing and uh, they hit a radius around the enemy and different bash mobs have different radii and do different types of damage. So you can do some AOE damage. These I generally don't use at all because they travel in a straight line 
and they don't travel through closed doors so you can't really set them up at all and generally your guns are more efficient because you can fire them from much larger distances. And then you have program cores which are passive upgrades, this one gives me critical damage as well as dodge chance and this one gives me some uh, more critical chance and critical damage as well as damage resistance. So these upgrade a few things here and there. I also talked about how different classes have different abilities. I've shown you three abilities. This is my shield. And um, if I press four, I can do the melee thingy, which, you know, uses AP. There you go. If I do not like my class level, I can use this blue fender and reset my class abilities. My class abilities for my class, which is a ascended, range from having plus two melee damage per ta stack, uh, plus five percent gun damage, giving me back AP after killing an enemy, and so on and so forth. Most of these are passive, a couple of these add uh, bonuses, none of them are active or add anything special to the title, and you can interchange the interaction with these with the character quite simple. So that is your entire character. Now is the gameplay good? Yes, yes, the core gameplay is pretty decent. The leveling, the abilities, the way you have to combine weapon types for different situations and the way you have to navigate levels as well as the various loot which is pretty diverse, all pretty decent. The, the randomized mischance and accuracy of weapons is probably the biggest downside I see of the game because it goes from FPS or precision strategy to random dice rolls which is fine for an RPG but not so much for a shooter or the game pertains to be. The second thing I do really do not like is the weird pseudo 3D, top-down 3D rendered low-poly graphics. I don't like them at all. I think the collision detection is very bad and overall really drags the game down. So would I recommend the Fractured as version 1.0? No, I would not. The adrenaline-filled shooting moments are far too few and too far in between all the various moments that frustrate you from the random mischances, the wonky physics interactions, and the weird stuff the game does all around it. The nice little RPG elements, such as abilities and levels combined with a variety of weapons, don't offset the fact that most of these don't handle in a fun way because of the randomized mischance and accuracy. But the soundtrack is great. So thank you for watching this video on Defractured. If you like this video, press the like button below. If you didn't like the video, press that dislike button and tell us why in the comment section below. And if you want to see more content here on the channel, just press that subscribe button and we will deliver. And until next time, I will see you right here on Guy Logic.